Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope we're doing well. So last time I talked about this idea of train test and validation sets, and I called this quote, the proper way to train machine learning models. Now, although this is true, this is a very good way or method to train ML models, but it is not the only way. Today, we're going to look at something called k-fold cross validation, which is basically just a more complicated same version of that. So a little bit of an expansion on the same idea that does a better job of getting a good model, which is our main goal. So to summarize last time's idea of train test and validation sets, basically what we do is split a data set, if this is our big data set, into three partitions. And so it would be not all the same size. We would do a split like this, where this is about 70%. This is about 15%, and this is about 15% as well, where this is for training, okay? So we split, make one split for training each of the models. We do another split called val, validation, where we care about the performance of the model, not on how well it can accurately classify the training set, we want it to do well on the validation set or any piece of data, any set of data that it hasn't seen before. And so this validation, we are saying it hasn't seen this before because it trained on this partition and now we're gonna evaluate its performance on this validation set. So what we do over and over again is we try to optimize the performance on the validation set. Whatever our metric happens to be, we'll say uh, accuracy, we want the highest accuracy for, uh, for any model. So we keep training models until we get a model with an accuracy we're pretty happy with. So at the end, we look at this final uh, partition called test, which is this partition it has not seen before at all. And this is for evaluating our chosen model. So all of this, we kept training models to optimize the validation accuracy. And then at the very end, we pick a model. And then just once we look at its performance on the test set so that we can say how well that model did. That was last time's idea, train test and validation. We're gonna do something extremely similar to that, except basically the idea now is that we have our data set. And for now, I'm just gonna split it into two partitions where it's gonna look something like, I'm gonna draw the line in the same spot here where this is again going to be train, okay? And this is going to be test. Now, it, right now it looks like we actually have gotten worse because we're down to just two partitions, except here this train is actually going to turn into both train and validation, but in a more clever way. Where what we can do is if we have this, you know, if the, if the model, if the data actually looks something more like this, if we split it into say five partitions, so one, one, two, three, four or five. Okay, this is our training set and it's in these five partitions like this. What we can do is over and over again, say, actually, I'm going to call this the part where I actually train on. Okay, so I'm actually going to call this, this is the train, train val set, really, because it's both of those things. I'm going to say, let's train on, train on these four pieces, train it, this will be 80% of the training set. And let's make this validation. Okay. So what this does is we we train a model and we can get a validation score for that. Well, now what we can do is because we have this flexible uh, style here, what we can do is actually train the same exact model, except no, 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 I don't want this to be val. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'll make that part of the, uh, the, the training. And so I'm going to move val over here. Okay. And so then what I'm actually going to do is say, I'll train the model on these three pieces and this piece, and then I'll, val I'll validate it on this other piece here. And we keep doing that where until we make the validation, we do that. Um, if we split it into five partitions here, we would get five different validations because we did five splits of train on 80%, validate on 20%, train on 80%, validate on 20%, but it's different every time. And so this gives a better model in the end if you're able to do this. So that's the idea. And now we are going to code that up. So just to make sure we understand both ideas, we're first gonna do train test and validation. And then after that, we're gonna do cross validation. It's not much work for either. So we are gonna do it on MNIST. So we're gonna do from tensorflow.curious.datasets. We're going to import the MNIST dataset. And then we can get X train, our inputs, our labels, X train, Y train and x test y test is equal to equal to mnist dot load load data 
And that's just, don't worry too much about our whole conversation and now we're getting train and test. That's just how you load in the data. And so it automatically puts it into train and test and we can, we can manipulate this however we really want to. Now we can look at the shapes of these things with x train dot shape, y train dot shape, x test dot shape, and y test dot shape. We can see we have 60,000 28 by 28, which will be images. I can actually plot one of those for you very easily with import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT and do plt.imshow with uh, the first image. So just plotting x train sub zero. We can see this is uh, a 28 by 28, uh, basically a, a five, okay? And y train, y train sub zero, that would be a five. It's, it's labeling what that is. Okay, so our model is going to be trying to take this picture or this input and try to predict its label. So we have 60,000 28 by 28 and the corresponding labels. And then in the test set, we have the same thing, but 10,000 of those. Now, firstly, since we are going to do train test and validation first, what we're going to do is a train test split. So we'll do from sklearn.model selection import train test split. So this is just a function, it's called train test. It's a little confusing, but what all we're gonna do is pass it that test, uh, the test information that we have, this stuff right here, so that that splits that into two partitions. And so we'll call one of them test, we'll call one of them validation so that we have train test and validation. Okay, so this is nice and easy. We can do x val and x test and y val and y test set that equal to train test split with x test y test and what are the other ones is going to be i think it's called test test split test i think it's test split is equal to 0 0.5 which is the fraction i can just look at that for a second for test size okay so if i give it a test size of 0 0.5 that'll split it evenly so that again if we were to look at these things we should see that they're shapes if i just copy this dot shape, dot shape, dot shape, and dot shape. We'll see that we split that 10,000 into now evenly 5,000, 28, 28, 5,000, 28, 28, 5,000, and 5,000, okay? So now we're able to do that same idea where we do train test validation and we'll make some sort of model. So I'm gonna make just a random forest. Random forest is probably not the right model to take in a picture and produce a label, but we'll find out it actually does pretty well. Uh, what you would wanna do is a convolutional neural network probably. Okay, so we'll do from sklearn.ensemble and import a random forest classifier. And we will also grab the metric ac accuracy score as our main sort of metric. sklearn.metrics import accuracy score. And then to make a random forest, we'll do RF is equal to random forest classifier. We'll give some smaller amount of estimators, maybe. So the trees is maybe, you know, 10 of these things and make their max depth, I don't know, around five or so. Okay. And then we'll do dot fit with, we'll give it, remember, we're fitting. What are we going to pass it? The training data. Okay. No matter what, X train and Y train. Okay. So we fit it. And then we can get the predictions. So we can do RF train preds. So this is what it would predict for the training set. RF train train preds is equal to RF dot predict, where we pass it the X train. And actually, I cheated right now, or I cheated. This actually wouldn't work. We actually have to do dot reshape, where we reshape the X uh, into sixty thousand. So that's however many it has. And then we can do common negative one. And what this does is before it was 60,000, 28, 28. This will make it 60,000 by 28 times 28. So like just two dimensions. And so it's just the way that sklearn wants this stuff to be put in because it can't really deal with pictures like this. It's just going to translate it to a long vector instead. And that's part of the reason it's not really the best model, but not really a big deal. Okay, so again, we, we to get the predictions for the training set, we would do the same thing, xtrain.reshape where we give it 60,000 by negative one. It's just flattening it. And then we can get the validation uh, predictions. Remember, we want to evaluate a model's performance based off of its uh, validation performance because it hasn't seen that yet. And so we'll do RF val preds. RF val preds is equal to RF dot predict with X val and we need to reshape that as well into however many we have. We have 5,000 of them by negative one. 
and then we can output we'll look at the metric for accuracy we'll look at the accuracy on both the training and the validation so we'll do rf train preds versus y train and we'll also do accuracy score of rf uh, val preds on y val and see how that does okay so we train one model with these parameters and we find that name t tf <laughs> oh i was thinking tensorflow yeah that makes sense okay and sorry i just realized that you couldn't see this over here so i will do rf is random uh, forest classifier of that and then i can call rf separately where i do rf dot fit with that we get an accuracy score uh, so 81% on the training set, we don't care, but again, 81% on the validation set, which is, you know, okay, but it's not uh, perfect. So what we would do in this style is that we keep training estimators, where we do number of estimators, maybe 12, okay, bump that up a little bit, uh, and then maybe bump this up a little bit as well. So we're looking at 81% on both of those. We try again and we say, okay, actually we got now up to 89% and 88%, which is really good. So Keep in mind what we just did. We changed parameters of our model and we're trying to optimize right now this validation accuracy. Let's try again. Maybe number of estimators is 14. Maybe bump this up again is nine. And we can see in a second, <laughs> it takes, okay, there we go. 92% accuracy. So very, very good. We're getting better all the time. And uh, yeah, we'll actually stop there, you know, for your purposes, of course, go ahead, try to find something better. So now we're happy with that model. We got our RF here. And so what we'll do is we'll just evaluate it on the test set. And so we say, uh, we'll get test RF, RF test preds, RF test preds is equal to the RF dot predict of X test. We need to reshape that, reshape, reshape into, it'll be 5,000 of them by negative one. And then we can do, uh, just get the accuracy score of RF test preds versus actual Y test. And a, a valid accurate metric uh, for how well this would do is about 92.6%, which is pretty good. Now that is one very fine, totally okay method of doing this. There's no problems with that, but you might wanna do something called K-fold cross validation to ensure even more that we're gonna get a good model out of this. Now. How we would do this in sklearn is uh, actually very easy. So we're going to do from, from sklearn dot model selection. We're going to import cross valve score. Okay. And now think about what we would actually need to pass this thing before we do it. This was cross validation here, uh, this, p this part here. And so we have two data sets, ignore test right now, because that's not really involved in cross validation. We have some data set here. So we're going to have to pass it in that big data set. And then we would need to say, okay, how many splits do you want? Because here I chose one, two, three, four, five different partitions. And so I did five fold, K equals five fold cross validation. Um, and so we would set that as well. And it turns out that CV, actually this thing here, I didn't even think about that. CV actually happens to be the parameter argument for uh, the, the number of folds that we want instead of I don't know why they didn't choose K, but they chose CV. Cross file score is it needs an estimator, which that's going to be RF, our random forest, our model. It's going to be this X, our input matrix, which you now right now our data is split into train, val, and test, which, you know what, I'm just going to completely eliminate that idea uh, and override this because if you see what I'm doing here, I'm just going to put this in the cell above where I'm just going to Go back to the very beginning of we just have two partitions of the data set about like a 70 30 percent split or i got i mean i guess it's six six out of seven and uh, one out of seven split of the data and we'll call this train our train and validation or our, our cross validation partition just to make sure that you follow me that partition is going to be this piece here and then the other one uh, test is going to be for that test again okay so I just overrided that. So we're back to the beginning. We got cross foul score. We're going to output the cross foul score of, we're going to pass it our random forest. We're going to pass it our X train. We're going to pass it, uh, well, Y is going to be Y train. And then scoring is important as well, which is uh, basically what do we actually want to return back? And I'm going to show you that we don't need that right now. And that if we just output this, if we ran it, it is going to be unhappy that again it found an array with dimension three which is because we didn't reshape it so here we can reshape it with uh this is going to be sixty thousand negative one and now here 
it's just going to take a little bit of time and that's very important to understand why it's taking time is it's because it's generating these splits it's saying we have this huge data set let's split it into four pieces or five pieces where first time the four are the training and then val and then other four are training and then other ones val and the other four are training the last one is val and so on now that I took a while, so that should be done now. And here we see we have five results, 92%, 90, 92%, 91%, uh, 91%, and 93%. So that is because uh, we get those five splits. We get those five different values, five different accuracies on our validation. So this is what really confirms to us. We can see here. No, we're very, very confident that this model is going to do well because it did five different partitions. And if we really wanted to, we could set, we could set CV equal to, uh, to 10. Actually, let's do, let's do seven. And instead of five different uh, accuracies, we're going to get seven different accuracies and really, really prove to ourselves that this model is good at generalizing, at being able to train on one data set and predict on this data that it hasn't seen before will be very, very confident of that with cross-validation. I hope I talked enough so that at the end of this, it should show up very, very soon. Come on, Random Forest, you got this. Don't make me skip, there we go. So we have seven different values, 92, 91, 92, 91, 92, 92, 94% accuracy. We're very, very confident that this model is going to do well. So then what we would do is um so actually right now this that we're very happy with this model because we did actually uh like we picked this earlier with the train test uh, validation idea what we would have done from the beginning is start with some uh, other estimators so maybe we actually started with uh with five and and four and so what we do here we train it and don't worry about these accuracies. This is just for training the model. It's still training it on the same training split, so it doesn't really matter. So we train it here and then we want to see how well it does. I'm going to lower this so that it runs a little bit faster. And so this is obviously going to do a lot worse, but I'm saying this is how we'd start over is um, originally you'd start with something like this, 69, 66, 69, 70. And then we'd say, okay, well, I wasn't very happy with that. Let's try a different model. And then I'll maybe bump this up to seven and this up to five, uh, six. Again, don't worry about these. It's going to train. And here we can see, okay, is it going to do better? Is it going to do better? Um, probably. <laughs> um, there you go. So 82%, 82%, 82, 82. Um, there you go. That's what cross-validation is. That's what it's for. And at the very end of this for training, what we would do, or after we've grabbed our model, we would again say uh, we would get test preds, test, test preds, is equal to uh, rf dot predict on x test and this is dot reshape with there's going to be how many is an x test right now it is in ten thousand because we don't have that train test validation split right now we have reshape where we give it ten thousand of these things ten thousand negative one and then we can do um what is it? Accuracy. Whoa, that's not what I meant to bring up. Hi there. Uh, it's going to be accuracy score of test preds, test preds versus um, Y test. Okay. And that's our final guess. Uh, and it's we're, we were much more confident that it was going to do well because of this cross validation idea. So I hope this helped. Uh, that explains the idea of cross validation, k-fold cross validation, what it is and how to do it in Python. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did and subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you in the next video.